The following program is made possible by First State Bank, offering secure online and mobile banking. First State Bank is ready to serve your financial needs with locations in Warren, Hermitage, and Hampton. First State Bank, the difference is leadership. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Okay. You should have a copy of your statement of revenues and expenditures for the month of September. <coughs> If anyone has any questions. I move that we approve the statement of revenue and expenditures as given to us at the agenda meeting and presented by the city clerk. Second. Motion and second to accept the statement of revenue and expenditures. Any discussion? If not, we will have roll call. Alderman Marshall. Yes. Alderman Goldfree. Yes. Alderman Mosey. Alderman Frazier. Yes. Alderman Henderson. Yes. Alderman Burks. Yes. Okay. Uh, and you should have a copy of your cash balances for the month of September as well. <clears throat> and I see the sales and use tax the city received for the month of September $95,314.53. For a year-to-date total of $803,608.98, city tax and world value of a percent at the same time last year. In the county, we received $68,020.86 for a year-to-date total of $552,815.01. Those taxes were up by 8% from the same time last year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We should also have a copy of the district court first report for September, as well as a third quarter overtime report. That is not okay. Thank you. All right, my report. We will start with the water department <coughs> request, and I, um, Miss uh, Tanae Reef is here. If you would like to just go ahead and, and explain to the council, since not everybody was at the agenda meeting, how the, what the uh, water department would like to request of the city for the building at the, the street department building. So we're requesting to be able to use the street department building that the street department is moving out of. Um, basically, we have we are running out of room for storage, and some of our equipment has to be stored indoors. During the winter, it can't get below freezing. Um, so we would like that building to use somewhat as a shop, storage, those kind of things. My commission has already agreed that if we're allowed to use it, we would put a roof on it, maintain it, insure it, just like we do with the rest of our buildings. Pay the utilities, etc. I know that we refer um, this to the Community and Economic Development Committee to see if there are any foreseeable plans for that building. And then bring it back to the council. Okay, there's a motion and second to move this to the Economic Community Development Committee for further discussion. And uh, we've got a motion and second. Is there any discussion? I'd like to add a little friendly. The uh, Community and Economic Development Committee is scheduled to meet on the 18th. That that be an agenda. That is correct. Item. And then we do have a meeting scheduled for the 18th. Okay. Will you add that to the agenda, please, ma'am? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor of this motion, uh, uh, roll call. Alder <laughs> Marshall. Yes. Alder Colfrey. Yes. Alder Mosby. Alderman Frazier. Yes. Alderman Henderson. Yes. Alderman Burks. Yes. Okay. And then water and sewer grant application. Today uh, we'll explain that to you. Everybody received something in, by email today, uh, myself included. So I will turn it over to today to let her explain to you what's going on with this uh, additional grant. Did everyone get a copy of the email? Or do you all need a hard copy? I know this went out a little late. We got it. <coughs> so we would like to apply for um, grant for the state ARBA funds. Um, the governor just released two hundred seventy million to white water and wastewater. Um, 
we would like to apply for a grant. The grant would cover 75% of the cost. The city would be responsible for 25% of the cost, which we already have secured funding for. Um, for water, it would be uh, $1,180,000. Uh, $1, and for wastewater, The total grant will be three million three hundred thousand forty seven two ninety nine point fifty point fifty yes so. I move that the city of Warren mayor be authorized to sign the American Recovery Act funds grant application for the water and sewer and that the city of Warren water and sewer be responsible for the 25% cost and that there be no financial obligation to the city of Warren governing body or mayor. Second. Motion and second to um, allow the mayor to sign the grant application for water and sewer. Any discussion? If not, we'll have a roll call vote. Alderman Marshall? Yes. Alderman Tofre? Yes. Alderman Mosley? Alderman Frazier? Yes. Alderman Henderson? Yes. Alderman Burks? Yes. Thank you. All right, Ms. Reek, that's, that's all um, on the agenda for the Water and Sewer Department. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a street closing uh, request for the homecoming parade. Same thing as usual every year. Uh, submitted by second. the school. Motion and second to, uh, yes. Motion and second to uh, allow to approve the street closing for the homecoming of parade. Any discussion? If not, a roll call vote. Alderman Marshall? Yes. Alderman Tolfrey? Yes. Alderman Mosley? Alderman Frazier? Yes. Alderman Henderson? Yes. Alderman Burks? Yes. Okay, next item is we need to amend the personnel policy. You have a copy of the amendment that we need to, to uh, make to our policy. I move that we table this item until after we see the audit report and review as stated by the auditor as mentioned at the agenda meeting. Second. Uh, motion and second to table this until um, after the audit report comes out. Okay. Any discussion? Okay, let's uh, vote by roll call. Uh, Alderman Marshall? Yes. Alderman Tolfrey? Yes. Alderman Mosley? Alderman Frazier? Yes. Alderman Henderson? Yes. Alderman Burks? Yes. Okay, we have another amendment to consider. Uh, this is requested by the codes, uh, uh, building and codes. Uh, a request, you have a copy of it in your packet. Need to amend the manufactured home section of 8.6.2. I move that we table until further study and review. Second. Okay, a motion uh, to table until further uh, study and review. And review. And there's a second. Is there any discussion? Could we, this did this come from Rob? Yes. Can we get him to talk to explain to us what, or is that supposed to come with tabling? We need more, I need more information. I mean, I don't know. Like, can, can, you, can, like, well, can we ask you to explain it now, or is that what later? You can ask for it, yes. I just don't want to do anything out of Rob's oh, no, that's, that's appropriate. Ms. Mr. Johnson? Yes, that's what I was just saying instead of Rob. I'm sorry, I wasn't. <laughs> uh, there, the, there's a motion and a second on the floor to table this until further uh, review and discussion. And now, uh, Alderman uh, Burks. No. Frazier. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I said that right. Burks Frazier yes. uh, would like to ask a couple of questions. Okay. Yes. I just want you to explain it. Like we, we have a policy in our planning commission book right now. Uh, 8.6.2 is, is a section that is located that a mobile home that is 20 foot period cannot be stored in the front yard. And after discussing it with the planning commission, they wanted to pull that <clears throat> and change it to all. 
Camping trailer RV and vacation trailers cannot be stored or parked in the front part of the yard. It has no limit. Length limit. Oh, okay. So it could it doesn't have to be twenty. It could <coughs> like right now somebody can store an eighteen foot camping trailer. Well, they can't store anything longer than a twenty. You can store eighteen right. up to a twenty, but if you got a twenty four, it doesn't say. The reason we looked at it is because I got challenged. That's what I was going to ask. A neighbor, a neighbor complained about a camper that was in the front yard. Said I thought we had an ordinance. Well, when I went out to look, it was like a twenty-eight foot camper, and it didn't say if you have a twenty-eight foot camper, you can store it in the front yard. Mm -hmm. All it stops is at twenty foot. It says you cannot have anything twenty foot or longer in the front yard. Twenty foot or shorter in the front yard. Oh, okay. It doesn't say you can't have a twenty-eight foot. So it just needs to be a change of work. That, that's it's what, all. That's what the plan commission and we, we all got together and just thought about it because of, and that's what that's what this is about. Okay, so we got we still have the motion on the uh, to table it for further discussion and review. Any more discussion? Yes, ma'am. I would just like to uh, add that the Arkansas Code fourteen fifty five two oh two. My concern is uh, there are six rules to remember about passing an ordinance or uh, actually amending an ordinance. So number one is the ordinance must be reasonable. Um, review, study, make sure that it is reasonable and all the works did ask for your clarification. Number two, they must not be oppressive. Number three, they must be they must not be discriminating or partial uh, to ensure that the whole city of Warren is um, reviewed or looked at upon. Number four, they must not unduly restrain lawful trade. Number five, they must not violate civil rights. Number six, they must not be ambiguous. And that's why I said, I feel that there should be study and, and I understood what you said. I'll call for the vote. Ask for a vote. Um, roll call, please, ma'am. Alderman Marshall? Yes. Alderman Colford? Yes. Alderman Mosley? Alderman Frazier? No. Alderman Henderson? Yes. Alderman Burke? Yes. Okay, now then, one other question to you, Alderman uh, Henderson, is where would you like, I mean, how would you like further review and discussion handled? Do we need a to put it before sanitation committee or where would you like to take that it? That would be yeah. the appropriate committee, yes. Okay. Now this recommendation comes from the planning commission. It's already been through the planning commission stage. And they but we have city council committees. So the planning commission is not a governing body member. I understand that. I was just like, just reminding y'all that it, it, it went, it had Very it clear stayed. that it, it was a planning I, committee. I understand. Yes. Okay, then we need to set a sanitation committee meeting to have further discussion. Our full council as a whole. Okay, do you want to put it back on the agenda for next council meeting? And have uh, some questions or, you know, get some- Table for study and review. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right, that is all that's on my report. We're ready for public comment. Do, does any alderman have any public comment? No. no. No one signed in? Okay. So we have no one that has signed in or called in for a public comment. Okay, we will move to our reports. Uh, start with our police chief. Good evening. Once again, it's been business to the police department. Um, you guys have a copy of my monthly report. It uh, pretty much details everything that um, needs to be shed by me. Um, in order to make it not seem so bleak, um, like I said before, a lot of things happen later on in the month that don't get on the monthly report. But I would like to announce that we did at the last week of September did receive approximately ten thousand dollars, three thousand dollars in a grant fund, and a little over seventy-five hundred dollars on drug forfeiture to help out with some of the uh, offset some of the uh, cost of our repairs and other equipment needed at the police department. So, 
that was a ray of sunshine at the end of the month. But other than that, like I said, you have the um, report in front of the loud office. It's just things going to the police department. I have a question. Relating uh, the dog catcher, yeah. we have a lot of dogs that's roaming. What, how, what procedure does he or she, whomever that person is, utilize in catching the dogs or getting the dogs to the owners? Well, it's not so much, you know, I'm glad you asked that question because that's a problem that we have. It's not so much a stray dog that they get away from their owners. You know, dogs are out in nature, so they tend to uh, reproduce. And so our pounds can only hold what, up to about a dozen dogs. And so we can only hold so many dogs. So it does get to the point where we cannot hold any dogs. So and to euthanize them, it was a process that to euthanize them. So at times it comes to the point where we don't have any room, any place to place the mm -hmm. dogs. So if they're not vicious and haven't been attacking anyone that's running around town, but we don't have an answer for that because we have no place to place them. Unless we're going to extend and build up a part of the dog pound, we can hold much more dogs. So we do have a, kind of a small capacity dog pound based on the population of the city. There's some of us that feel that any dog that run up on you and you, you know. Yes, ma'am, definitely. I'm the same way. I feel the same way. Um, like I said, what we have to do is if, when we have a call on stray dog that, that's running loose, we have to So we have to call it in. I mean, that's no, no, actually, person. actually, he patrols. I, will, I am a patrol officer. Does patrol. Okay, he, yes, he, he patrols. Where does he, he patrol? I mean, he has certain streets that he patrols. Patrol the entire city of Warren. Yeah, I, I've seen him. He, he knocks on the fruit dog. Yes, 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 yes ma'am. <laughs> But what happens with a lot of times, like I said, when we run out of room. But that's the beginning at eight o'clock in the morning, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. But <laughs> what, what if we have what, what, what if we have a vicious dog? We do call out at night uh, before we come out and get the dog if it's vicious. But like I said, what we run into is is that the, uh, the capacity of the pound does not hold a large capacity of dogs. And then, like I said, we're not just really, really want to go out and euthanize and try, try to find homes for them, things of that nature. So when we're at full capacity. So you all do that, find homes for them? Yes, ma'am. Well, yes, ma'am. We, we work with the animal um, shelter out of the, um, out of the um, animal clinic, and we have people that volunteer that also help us. We've had dogs, had airplanes flown in and picked up dogs and leave them flown to the East Coast, but homes have been found for them. So yes, ma'am, we do actively have to seek to try to find homes for them, other than to euthanize them. But, you know, sometimes we will have to do what we have to do when it comes to the point where we run out of space and, and the dogs are overflowing the town. But that's the issue that we have. It's not that we're not actually trying to remove the dogs from the town and from the best woman's streets, but we're not going to decide to move. Okay, thank you. I'll pass that along. Yes, ma'am. Um, Alderman Frazier, do you have anything to add as a, to your to the police commission report? No, I want to have a meeting. I'm just not sure. Angela's not here. Who else is on that committee? Uh, oh. Burks and Mosley. And you. So I'll, um, I'll set up a police committee meeting in the next two months, probably before Christmas. Okay. All right. Uh, that's it. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Fire Chief Moore. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, fire department responded to six calls during the month of September with two coming out to the entire department. Uh, we held our monthly <coughs> meeting on September the 6th with 22 members present. We had a volunteer payroll of $860. Uh, had two training. We had a pipeline awareness meeting with the 811 people on September the 6th. And on the 20th of September, we burned the house at 807 Henry for training. We did have one house fire on the 21st on Railroad Street. There was one civilian burn injury in that fire. Uh, other than that, that's... Did you say one was burned? Or yes, ma'am, one man was burned. And one of your No, ma'am, the civilian. The oh, man that lived in the house was burned. And I think he's still in a little rock in the burn thing. And we are currently under a burn ban and will be for the foreseeable future. So I had a man tell me today he thought it had been he thought it had been rescinded. I said, Well what made you did it rain did it rain at your house? <laughs> <laughs> it, it ran a fruit drop this evening. <laughs> it, it had this second at one o'clock. 
What well, chief, you, you said you did burnt the house on Henry Street. Yes, sir. Uh, for training. And you stirred up a lot of people who want to know about that. Could you give the information that you have to go through to do that? Uh, if you come to us and we deem it safe, the fire department charge is $500 to pay to the city. But the homeowner is responsible for and there is a liability release form that has to be signed and relieving us of any liability. But like I said, first we have to look at it and make sure we can safely do it. Thank you. We if we had, had previous fire in this house and they decided to go on and burn it from there, that they moved in a nice little mobile home and Anything else, Alderman Telfrey, as chairman? No. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, uh, sanitation, Mr. Johnson. Good evening again. Anybody have any questions about the sanitation? Everybody, everybody's doing a great job. Still one short. We did hire a part time week before last, but he started doing a great job. Slowly but surely. Yeah, yeah. Everything's, everything's good. Everything's I, good. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. And, and my question actually doesn't have anything to do with your report. But during our Ways and Means Committee meeting, uh, you submitted your proposed budget for 2023. Yes, ma'am. And then on the cover of your uh, submission, it states um, to the mayor, Rob Johnson, sanitation supervisor, a position has been eliminated in the sanitation department when did that happen and who approved for that position to be eliminated? Well, and this is dated August the 23rd. Okay, that we, we've been running ads trying to get a replacement driver. We were one short when I came in December and we're still one short, but we've been able to get by really good without filling the, that job position. Okay, but Elimination may have been a wrong word. I'm okay. sorry if I did wrong. I was just trying to make a request on something that couldn't possibly go right for everybody else if, if we did eliminate that job. I've talked to the crew and everybody's happy with the way things are going. And uh, I, I personally, I don't see the need for it for another person. Okay, but only the governing body, the mayor nor the department head, according to statute Arkansas Code 1458-103, uh, the city council would have to eliminate. Now you can leave the position open. You do as the department head, you do have the right to do that um, along with the administration. But when it comes down to um, eliminating a position, uh, it should come before the um, before the city council. And, and that's my bad, it's the wrong wording. I was just making a request to the mayor that we've done really good. And if, you know, if there's any way of getting the guys any more money, I believe we could do without the other position being filled. So it's been vacant since December? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Yes, ma'am, I'm sorry, and I'm, and I'm sorry about the wording. I, I, no problem, I mean, I was just trying to figure out that I missed something, did it come before the council and we, I mean, what happened, who got, who got, you know, removed from the position? Right, you know, you know, right. Et that was just his, his request for next year's budget. It doesn't so say request, it. well, then we, it, it says we, a position has been eliminated. That's, we have nothing has been eliminated. That's what this says, it's in black and white. Well, that's, I know. That's, that's, like my, fault. that's my fault. That's my fault. I've written incorrectly. Well, uh, yeah. Okay, no problem. It's, it's just a request. Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, let's move to building official report. Mr. Johnson. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. School's coming right along. Uh, the gym is about 65 percent completion, and the school is about 55 percent, 60 percent at the most. But progress is being done, and they're they're doing a good job. Uh, we, uh, Mr. Johnson, yes, sir. Just 
uh, when you say gym, or could you say arena? Because one of the reasons why we did that is to give the girls a place to dress and practice, and then the cheerleaders also. So we're going to use it for a multi-purpose place to kind of help benefit all those students. And then okay. on I'm the sorry. other side of it, we're going to uh, have a walking track on the upper level that will be uh, available to the citizens. We'll have a tennis on duty also there for safety reasons. Okay. Uh, my bad. Once again, bad choice of words. Uh, it's everything's going good. With citizens of Warren should really be proud of it. Uh, first class in my book. <laughs> uh, getting back on some condemned properties that we talked about last last time. Uh, we set out uh, some 20, 22 uh, certified letters. Uh, I got 11 of them back that was not signed. And uh, the mayor and I are working to see if there's any other process there is for doing this. You send a letter out, they acknowledge they got it, then we proceed with cleaning it up. Uh, without that letter, there's a clause in our ordinance stating what we must do, and uh, everybody's a little skeptical. We're trying to make sure we do it right. Uh, the letters are $7.38 a piece every time you send one out, and it's getting to be pretty pricey. So, uh, But on the good side, we've got five properties cleaned since the last sanitation meeting, uh, I mean city council meeting. Uh, we also have three, uh, no actually we have four houses on the list to be burned. Uh, no, uh, on top of these five that's already been claimed, we've got four to be burned once the burn ban is lifted. Uh, they're on Cary Street, Pearson, South Main, and West Church. Uh, once again, the fire department's gonna help us on those and uh, the people have committed to having them done that, that own the property by now. We've had uh, 17 vehicles removed from the city limits by the help of the Warren Police Department and they have done a terrific job on helping me uh, get these cars out of here. We've had them removed from Millwood, Lincoln Street. We've had them moved from Pine Street, Arkansas Street, and South Main. Uh, I estimate we've got about another thousand to get, but we got to start somewhere. We got 17 out of here this past month, and we're working on it right now. Uh, we've got a, got a crew that's picking up junk uh, just about every day. That's going real good. Our limbs have backed off a little bit because we, we've had just a little trouble with the truck, but we've got it back running, and uh, we should be in the process of picking up limbs again within the next week. That's where we are on that. Ron, what, what process would you, citizens, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, I'll remark Okay, because I know I've got some phone calls and I had mentioned to the mayor last week about, uh, which, which we do know there's an ordinance on the book about non-running uh, vehicle or properties. Um, but this person was concerned that um, that the city of Warren is making money off of these vehicles and there's about 10,000 vehicles that's on the list to be towed, um, identified, and the person wants to know is, you know, basically the city is making money off of these vehicles that are being um, taken from individuals' yards and um, at a cost of around about $400 is what someone had mentioned to me. And so, and that, and that was my response. And we do know that there is an ordinance for that. Uh, to go ahead and have a conversation, you know, with Rob about it. Are you are you giving them a letter to have these vehicles moved with, within a certain length of time? Yes, ma'am. What's the process? The, the process is I get a complaint. Uh, I, I, know, I, I find the owner or the, the owner of the property. Rather, a lot of a lot of the times the vehicle is is on somebody else's property, so it goes back to the owner of the property. I contact them. They have 10 days by ordinance to get rid of the vehicle. Now, you can maintain one in, at the house if you're repairing it, uh, but there's also a clause in order stating that you have seven days to get it repaired. I, I'm, working with, I'm working with several people right now that are having trouble getting parts, and, you know, things are expensive. We totally understand that. We're not just out to 
to tear people up and, and get on people. So, I mean, I've got several that we're working with. I've got a person on Wheeler Street. I've got a, another gentleman on South Main uh, that that we're working on. Uh, Cloquette, I'm working, not Cloquette, uh, uh, Pearson, I believe, corner of Pearson and, and uh, over by Charlie Wap. I don't, I'm going blank on that street. St. James is uh, in the area off Pearson. Yeah, it's the one running north and south. Uh, we'll call it. We'll call it. Yeah, I'm sorry. And uh, uh, after the after the ten days is up, now what the city can do uh, is is get the vehicle impounded for another fourteen days. The city owns it for fourteen days, and then the city can sell it if nobody if nobody claims it or, or removes it from the city. Now what? Because yeah, I think that's why the court, that's what this individual who contacted me had concerns about if, if they're not able to recover their property, who's going to benefit from the sale of the vehicle? Okay, right, right now, Ms. Marshall, we, we have worked out a deal with, with both uh, record companies and more, uh, or whichever one's on call at the time, Kathy's or Bray's or Bray's or Kathy, whichever one at the time. Uh, and they, they, they moved the, the vehicle for the vehicle. They're required by state law. There's a different law than what our ordinance states. They're required to notify the owner of the vehicle, and and they have like two weeks uh, to uh, pay for the record bill and get to get the car moved somewhere else, or it becomes property of the record service. But that's a completely different law than our ordinance. But the the record company has agreed to take the vehicle at no cost to the city for just the vehicle and that's the way we've been doing it. We have not, the city has not collected one dime on any of the vehicles. Uh, now the majority of the vehicles that are being moved are being moved by the individual that owns the property on their own. Uh, so we, we hadn't had to use a record but a couple of times, an independent record just a couple of times so far. Okay, well the main thing is make sure it's still your for the record. So I don't know who's there in attendance. You know, maybe one of the persons who contacted me. Um, but at least, um, you know, it's explained and people can understand the process and know that, you know, they're not being picked on, just driving by and deciding to go and take a vehicle from the person's yard. No, ma'am, I work strictly off so, complaints. Right, um, complaints. And, yes, and that's what I had mentioned, you know, if, you know, because the warrant is too big for some person to, to drive around and just um, decide I'm going to go ahead and tow this vehicle. It's strictly from complaints, and we understand that. So we need to make sure our patients understand that someone has to complain about it. Well, and Ms. Marshall, when I, when I meet or talk to someone on, on on somebody, if somebody's going to complain against you, for instance, I will go to you and let you know that there has been a complaint filed. And, I mean that's the way I that's the way I work it, and and I think I think people are pretty well satisfied. Uh, I mean, like I said, we're not out to to just you know just get mean and, and do that. Although I think we might need to get a little meaner, but uh, there's there's a, uh, maybe that's the wrong word too. But anyway, uh, that's our process right now, and it seems to be working well. And, and, so as long as the patrons know that the city is not parking off or taking your leave. No, ma'am, not 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 the way we're doing it now. No, ma'am, not at all. Okay, all righty. Alderman Telfer, you had a question. Well, basically, he answered. I was going to know what process would the citizens go through, and would to notify him with a complaint, and then we'd take it from there. Okay. Okay. All right. Is there anything else? Not okay. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. <clears throat> okay, um, street committee, Mr. Did I skip one, Miss Helen? No, <laughs> street, street foreman, <laughs> Mr. Hernford. Good evening. Uh, it's pretty much we have been busy bush hogging. We uh, got caught up. We should finish all of the bush hogging tomorrow. Uh, it's down to the wire. I'm running the crew and we're patching potholes, cutting limbs. Uh, as time permits, we are cleaning the ditches. Uh, I have prepared a list 
uh, of the dish cleaning that we have done. If anyone wants one, I can provide you with a copy of it. I'd like to have one. Yes, ma'am. You can bring one to me. If you all look one. <laughs> if you're coming. I'll come over to you. Ms. Marshall, would you like one email to you? Thanks. Yes, please. Okay. And we'll see that Ms. Mosley gets one too since she's not here. We have completed some drainage issues uh, through the woods where we wouldn't, we've had uh, a lot of backlog uh, property that was, uh, the ditches need to be cleaned through the woods. Uh, we've actually got in there since it's been dry enough to do those. Uh, we just, like I said, Passing potholes as much as we can. Weed eating. Uh, Have you fixed the one on Rock Street? Ma'am? Have you uh, repaired the pothole on Rock Street? I have not seen a pothole on Rock Street, on Rock Street itself uh, that I'm aware of. Are you talking, I, I went both north and south and I have not actually seen one. Yes, there I is a dip in the road uh, on rock that is the uh, culvert has collapsed on the edge and the ground is dipped. But uh, as far as it being a pothole, no ma'am, I have not. Okay, when I walk through there, I'll take a picture and send it to you. Yes ma'am, please do. Uh, at any time, if any of the uh, aldermen, all the women want to ride around in their, in their ward to look, uh, I have. Just give me a call and we'll get up and, and go right around and look and see what your concerns are. See what we can do to fix it. Okay. No other questions? Thank you, sir. <coughs> this is uh, Alderman Mosley's not here. Um, okay. Uh, Ms. Marshall, you did, you've already stated that there's a Community and Economic Development Committee meeting. Yes, that's going to be next Tuesday, October 18th at 5 p.m. Okay. Okay, now Ways and Means, Alderman Henderson, do you have a report? I do. The City of Warren Ways and Means Committee met on September the 28th uh, here in the courtroom at 5 p.m. Uh, each alderman was presented with a uh, packet of information from our meeting so that we would have the uh, data that the committee uh, reviewed. Uh, just to uh, share with you, uh, the meeting consisted of the proposed uh, 2023 budget, and each of you should have receive a document that looks like this. Uh, the mayor shared with us that she used the uh, current budget, which we passed in 2022, uh, and uh, based it off of that. And if you'll notice in the right-hand corner, um, beginning with uh, page two, it says 923-2022 in the left-hand corner the document, the big document that you have. Uh, it is um, self-explanatory. However, um, looking at the budget on page 10, um, where it says uh, proposed budget, contract services, agent, area agency on aging, concept contract services consulting, um, those items as it relates contracts, uh, economic development, uh, we are referring to community and economic uh, development committee that will be meeting uh, on the 18th. Uh, we did not uh, discuss the uh, recommendation for the Housing Authority and the Water Department employees as it relates to the American Rescue because this was discussed 
around the table. So if any aldermen have a recommendation, if you would share that information with the committee, we would be uh, happy to receive it and share it during our next meeting. American Rescue Funds, you did receive a copy of the balance and that sheet look, was a spreadsheet uh, that had rescue grant at the top and if you would look at the bottom of the page, $945,865 is the actual balance. Uh, it was also noted that if we chose to move forward, we would need to uh, pass a uh, resolution amending the city and rescue grant budget for the purposes of claiming police salaries and employee payroll contributions. And it, uh, it actually spells um, this out, and this was a recommendation of the uh, municipal aid. In your information, uh, you received the proposal from the uh, department head's request and the uh, first one that I have, and that's because I already had it out, was from the uh, sanitation. You saw where um, the department had stated that he was recommending uh, that the council eliminate a position and more or less spread the amount for that salary over to the uh, employees uh, equally and he said that it would be approximately $3,707.50. Also attached to that, um, you will see the proposed uh, budget that was listed for 2022 and the proposed one for 2023 um, to include the daily um, operation. The road department submitted uh, a request uh, to promote one of their uh, employees who is a lead crew supervisor and stated that this employee had been with them since, uh, with us, since 20, 2015. And he would like for this employee to have the salary of 15.9 step uh, A and this came from um, the department head, Hans Berger. Also, as you uh, will see, you do see the proposed budget for 2022 and then the amount for proposed for 2023. Recreation, uh, you do have uh, that. You do have law enforcement. And I would like to... Uh, share with you the sheet that says city request and this is in relation to the American Rescue Dollars. Uh, you will see the recommended uh, breakdown in each of the uh, categories. The operating uh, budget for the fire department, you will see budget what we currently have for 2022, proposed for 2023, as well as the recreation and the administration uh, to include um, all of the departments of this report, uh, et cetera. We did receive and we will be referring, as I previously stated, a request from the Rally County Economic Development Corporation, uh, a request uh, for funding in the amount of $20,000 for fiscal year 2023. We did receive a request from the Chamber of Commerce uh, for the same amount, $20,000, and area agency on aging for the uh, fans, air conditioners for seniors for $2,000. And of course, uh, 
we as committee members had received um, a letter from Mrs. Lipton uh, for funding of two thousand uh, dollars for for the uh, Bradley County uh, Museum. I would also like to just share with you two uh, few items just to think about. Um, Mayor, I guess I need to first ask you a question. The 2% for employees that was in the 2022 uh, budget, uh, is that there? I did not see a handout uh, on that, so is that there? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so it's in the, the yes, salary. It, okay, it's so in thank you. Okay, and then uh, secondly, uh, council, you will need to make a decision uh, do you want to exhaust all of your American Rescue funds in 2023, um, or do you want to use part of them? Uh, that is a decision that we will need to know before we schedule our uh, second Ways and Means uh, Committee meeting. Um, last uh, time period uh, for the budget, this current budget, uh, we did uh, have a contractual agreement with the Pink Tomato Festival. Is this something that uh, we want to do? Uh, the City of Warren Pool needs renovations. Uh, we had asked uh, Alderman Frazier, uh, and I believe uh, Kyle was working on what do we want to put in the budget uh, for the uh, City Pool. The Bryant Building. Um, this has been an item that we hear quite often from um, Alderman Zerks. You're looking at roughly rounding up $226,000. The mayor was uh, working to get uh, the total amount uh, for um, the demolition of getting this building uh, removed. Um, do we want to, I just shared with you that the American Rescue Dollars, we have a balance of $945,865.90. If we spend $226,000, that is going to be a big chunk. Do you want to do this in phases? Do you want to pull all of the dollars out? What do we want as a council uh, to do with the uh, Bryant building. Also, would just like to point out that within the budget that I just shared with you, the big one, uh, 200000 is listed there for paving. We know that paving is a major issue for uh, our city streets along with drainage, along with um, individuals um, wanting their streets uh, paved. Uh, is 200000 enough? Uh, we normally do 125000 I mean, this is something that as a council, uh, we need to know so that we can appropriately add uh, to the proposed budget that uh, we will be uh, passing. Uh, what it's do not a no. Okay. Okay, well, if you will submit something to this committee, we will be very, very happy. Thank you. Uh, uh, contracts, um, you know, um, what do we want to do, you know, about the uh, the contract? Uh, we had listed the, the armory. You heard where the water department is asking uh, to utilize that building. We know that uh, the amount that we was given was $12,800 to put a roof on and other things would need to be done. How do we want to handle uh, community and economic development? Does the city want to hire an employee? Do we want to hire a consultant? What do we want to do? However, uh, we are referring uh, that to the uh, community and economic development committee and hopefully they will come back uh, to us with, uh, with a recommendation for, for this uh, Ways and Means Committee. Now, I just want to remind the council that the physical year for each city and town begins January 1. Uh, it actually ends at midnight, December 31st of that uh, particular year. The governing body of the, of the city council, if we do not pass a budget, and we should pass a budget uh, 
on or before February 1. If we do not pass a budget, then we would have to enact a temporary budget in order to keep our city operation going, uh, etc. The mayor stated that she has submitted to us uh, her proposed uh, budget. Uh, the committee needs to go back, get your input as a council, and have another meeting and possibly a third meeting and bring back our uh, recommendation. So I am open now for any questions that one might have. I don't have a question, but I do have a, one clarification. You mentioned the armory and the uh, water department. Mm -hmm. They're not looking at the armory per se. It's the shop, the street shop that they're that they're asking. I mentioned the armory because of the fact that we had talked about getting it uh, equipped to do something for the public. Right. But not in not, not in conjunction. No, 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 not not in conjunction. The water department is only, as she <clears throat> stated, is only interested in the street department old building that the roof will cost twelve thousand eight hundred dollars to put to put on. And then another um, uh, comment I'd like to make is the budget that I have proposed is not utilizing and using up all of the American Rescue money. The ordinance that, that the council will have to decide to what to do with will allow the money to be transferred into the general fund and then it can be appropriated. But that's not using all that money in one year. But I mean, if we, if we do all of the things that's listed, it, oh, absolutely. It, will, it will meet and exceed the absolutely. 900 and... Uh, but, but the proposal was not to spend it all at once in, within the 2023 20, budget. But if... It again, was just requests were made <laughs> to you all <laughs> to decide which ones you wanted to, and that to go was ahead my and do point, now or later. That was my point. It's the reason that I asked the council if they had uh, items that they wanted to add that they would. But if you look at the 900 and uh, however many thousand it is, uh, if we did all of the things that was requested, it will exceed yes, that amount. Yes, ma'am. You are correct. <laughs> okay. Any questions? That ends my report, and we will get together and have a meeting uh, after after the 18th because we need to find out what direction uh, or if any uh, direction that the Economic and Development Committee would have for us. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. All right. Thank you. Uh, moving on, Parks and Rec. Mr. Wagner is not with us tonight. They're still playing fall ball, so he is he's out of pocket right now. Planning Commission, uh, you've got the minutes of their monthly meeting. Aviation Commission, we do have a meeting set. I believe it's next Thursday. Uh, Charlotte, give me a heads up if I find it right. The 20th at 6 o'clock. And uh, Water and Sewer, you've got their minutes. And the balance sheet. Housing Authority, no meeting. Cultural Center, you've got the monthly report. Um, the cultural center is still being utilized by the school until they get their arena uh, or their, their cafeteria back up and running. Um, is there any unfinished business? And uh, no public statement, no one signed in that did not speak. Uh, any new business? Any announcements? I do remember homecoming is this week and if you will notice coming up the hill across the railroad track, uh, Make Warm Shine uh, has done their last project and they have a new mural that is uh, reflective of our uh, lumberjacks. So uh, it's, it's kind of an addition. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the History Walk downtown has been uh, canceled for now. The narrator that was coming from Little Rock had a, a tragedy in her family and was not able to come Saturday. Fall Festival downtown, don't forget, is October the 29th. We've got several um, class reunions scheduled for October, so we will be having a lot of visitors in town. And so, you know, if, if you meet someone that you haven't seen in a while, just uh, remember, you are an ambassador for the morning when we have out of town guests. Uh, I need a motion to pay the bill for September. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Motion and second to pay the bills for September. Any discussion? All those, roll call. Alderman Marshall? Yes. Alderman Coker? Of course. Alderman Mosley? Alderman Frazier? Yes. Alderman Henderson? Yes. Alderman Burks? Yes. Okay, the meeting for October will be set for, uh, the agenda meeting will be on the 10th at 7 a.m. and uh, Tuesday the 14th will be our agenda meeting at 5.30. I need a motion to adjourn. I move that we're joined. Second. Second. Motion and second. So we are adjourned.